service in helping others attain their goals and their needs. And of course, for us to be able to do that, we have to be able to judge whether those goals and needs are important. But our position is clear. The thing about being of service, if we're clearly to be of service to others, and it's something I don't think that most people look at, is in order to serve others, then within you must be a certain degree of knowledge, understanding, power, or you might not be able to serve or help. You have to have certain abilities at your hand. If an individual is sick, suffering, suffering from a physical ailment, do you understand the healing process? Do you understand how to help them? And that particular process requires a certain inner understanding, inner peace, it doesn't necessarily translate itself to a position of high power in the world. And in fact, many times we look at it and we see those in positions of power have great unrest. They don't know what inner peace is. The cares and the problems of the world have become so burdensome to them, they've lost the concept of any type of inner peace. And in a great sense, they've lost their way and lost their lives. For us, it is to create that path of peace, understanding, and love within ourselves in order that we can bring that to others, in order that we can help others. So our life is clearly one of service and of sharing that which we have come to understand. Now I don't, I have this thing ticking off in the back of my head here, so I'm not quite sure why it's relevant, but I guess I have to go into it because it won't shut up. And it was on Mark Twain here this morning, and um, it seems that um, Mark Twain uh, got involved with a lot of things and that, um, you know, in particular, he started a publishing company and he published a book and the first one was very successful and it was something about politics and everybody wanted to read the book. I think it had to do with Grant and everybody wanted to, to read and understand about Ulysses Grant or whatever it was and for his second venture and it bankrupted the company, the second venture, is that, a, and I guess it's becoming more clear to me now, is that um, he thought that people would want to know and understand the life of the Pope. And it turned out that he only sold 200 copies. In fact, and all of the money that he had placed into that venture to publish that particular work went nowhere. And to him, it was clearly something that people would want to know and understand, and yet the general public could have, at that point, have cared less about the Pope and what his life was like and what he was doing. So we take a good look at that, and that may give us, and I guess that's the idea, that's why that kept scratching back there, is that's the idea that we have in, in, in our mentalities, is that the lives of people that lead what are apparently to us boring lives, lives of, and the Pope was considered to be a spiritual leader, um, days of the Spanish Inquisition and things like that were all gone, and so as we look at that, is that seem to be boring, but the concept of a war hero, the concept of someone that had risen to the presidency of the country, all of that was much more interesting and much more entertaining and I think a lot of that is still true today, and it, it's just a further manifestation of that type of thing. But this scripture is a clear I want to use the word warning, but I think it's past that. It's, it's a clear admonition to us to not surprise that stuff so highly. 
It's good to be aware of the changes that are taking place in society. It's good to be aware of that we have a new regime coming in. But we're going to be able to see what effect this regime has by the work that it does, by the steps that it takes to see whether or not it will be of service to the people of this nation and ultimately to the people of the world because we're so interconnected now. And so we'll have to sit back and take a look at that. And certainly as projects come up, and I'm sure they will, that seem to be helpful to mankind, it's for us to be able to join in with those and to lend our support to those. And as projects come up that may not be so helpful, we should be raising our voice and objecting to that. And I've recently had a um, look at that on a smaller level of existence just over here at Valley College, they've recently put in $4 million in refurbishing the theater building and that is continuing to go on now and they're not ending it. But before the, the project is even completed, apparently they've gotten some federal grant for a larger sum of money and now they want to tear down the building and build a whole new building. And so we're sitting in an economy that everyone talks about there's no money available and somehow there's millions and millions and millions of dollars and I think the grant was somewhere around 50 million for building projects within the community for community colleges. Now if a community college can obtain 50 million dollars on a building project for one building, I think that it's safe to say that other colleges throughout the country that are even of a more elevated status than the community colleges are going to be getting substantial sums of money. And it appears to be that they're going to be into the billions and billions of dollars, at least judging from what's taking place with one small community college sitting out here in the valley. And I, the construction element while I'm not totally in love with lining the pockets of the construction companies, we have to look at the concept that there's an awful lot of money that's going to be funneled into our economy. That's supposedly a failing economy. And so these building projects will create an awful lot of work for people and uh, will certainly create an affluence of money spread throughout. And I, you know, hopefully um, that aspect will work out quite, quite well. Economics is a strange thing. We've all been told that we're in this deep economic slump, but somehow there seems to be a plethora of money around for certain projects. So maybe our situation isn't as bad as we've been led to believe. And maybe there were political overtones involved with what's taken place in our economic structure at the moment. It's all for us to wait and see. I do note that gas prices are down substantially, that for somehow, and someone explained to me that's because those are last year's prices. Boggles my mind. I guess they think I've forgotten what was taking place last year. But um, it seems to me they're well below what we've seen in quite some time. And perhaps they might go up again. But you know, all of these things we don't have any control over. What we have control over is how helpful we can be in our lives to the people that we interact with every day. And that's our sphere of influence. We might wish to have a greater sphere of influence, but if we can handle the sphere of influence that we're presently in and be in service to those that are around us, then perhaps we'll be given a greater sphere of influence later on in our lives. But we're at this point in time doing the things that we are presently doing. So let us do them well and do them being mindful of all those around us. Everyone we meet each day, whether it's at the market, whether it's at work, whether it's on the freeway, at church, let's be mindful of that, how we can be of service.